All right, welcome to Screen Say. I am Nathan Lee, and I am here with my partner in creativity and film, Melissa Sue Lopez. Uh, Melissa, can you introduce yourself? Hi, guys. It's Melissa Sue, and I can wait to share all the all, all of our thoughts with you guys. And that doesn't mean it's it's what we say it is. It is more about you know just having a conversation. And Screen Say is is dedicated to all things in film. Um, it's we talk about everything happening from the latest news in film, technology in film, uh, and just concepts of film. And our motto is you can say anything that you want as long as you say it well. And today I want to talk with Melissa about um, AI in film. We just had an interesting and somewhat scary conversation about where everything is going with AI. And uh, one of the things that I, I talked with her about and we're going to pick up where we left off, is what's going to happen when AI becomes the norm and they start manufacturing stars rather than hiring stars? Where does that leave people? Melissa, what do you think about that? Do you think that, that that's a viable thing, or do you think it's something that's that's kind of screwed up? What I can say more, it's, it's, it's scary. It's scary for me. Because I'm like, how many actors are out there that, you know, survive? by their talents and now they had to worry about that what, what's going to happen with them what other ideas they have to survive what other talents did they have in order to to move forward with their with their life to be honest for me that concerns me a lot and especially if you think about like the the actors and actresses that haven't made it you know tom cruise i don't think we have to worry about what tom is going to do <laughs> And I don't think we got to worry about, you know, whoever else. We don't have to worry about those people. But we do have to consider those ones that are unheralded. If you're simply being replaced by something that doesn't exist, that you don't have to pay, you don't have to, there's no, um, there's no expenses, how can an actor compete with something that's just basically thin air and tech? You know, I don't know that, that it's going to come down to that. We'll see. But if it does, then that changes the whole landscape. And um, I kind of think about, I don't know if you're aware of it or if you've seen it, and just tell me if you have. On Instagram, they had this this model, right? And all these guys, these dudes were like, oh, I love her, I love her. She has like a million plus followers, only to find out that she wasn't a real person. She sucked. <laughs> she, she, was, she was just AI. Now, the interesting thing about it was there was outrage and uh, there was an uproar, but they, there was also a, a part of that AI generated person's fan base that stayed. What if that happens in film to where they're like, well, I don't, I don't give a damn if it's, um, um, you know, if it's Sigourney Weaver, I don't care as long as the movie is good. That says a lot about what people think about stars. They like good movies, I think, more than they really care about stars these days. And there's been a downshift in star power. People aren't going for for actors. They're going for the entire movie. So I don't know what you think about that, but well, uh, that AI is, is just, that's scary. Right there is scary. Yeah, one of the things we were talking about was that, you know, you had to have a great idea, right, in order to, to keep up. And um, I was, I, I, to be honest with you guys, I don't know too much about technology. Mm-hmm. So I'm coming from a perspective of what I hear. Yeah. And um, it, it, for me, I think what you said about uh, what makes you creative, what makes you different, it's that concept, that idea that comes from you. Yep. And how we can advance with that before, like, how can we, two steps ahead before AI or how can become a team with AI yeah. in order to make things happen now from now on. That for me is very interesting. How together now, how technology and you can become one in order to be a new creative force. Now let me play devil's advocate. Okay. You become a successful filmmaker. You end up, um, having your own production entity and you have access to the technology to basically generate your own actors. 
<laughs> oh wow! Now uh, you're talking to someone who has always been poor, making the films, like who can't. And the movies that I want to make, you know, people are not very interested, as I love true stories. Yeah. So it, it, it's very tempting because <laughs> I want to make the films that I want to make, and now there can be the possibility of making it happen. That's oh shoot. That's intriguing. I mean, because yes, it's like. It is. You know, it seems like as artists, we'd be like, the quick answer is, oh, no, screw that. We're going to make sure that actors, but now it's like, oh, hold on, hold on, cowgirl, hold on, cowboy. You know, the thought of what that means as far as money saved, and this is from a practical standpoint, you know, we're not even talking from a creative standpoint. The money saved without there being a loss of quality, do we, do we sacrifice the human element for the bottom line. And I think that's where, you know, if we see this technology take off, I think that's what we're going to see um, when we get into how Hollywood handles it. You know, and we know, what do we know about Hollywood? Their bottom line. And with the writer's strike going on, I don't know that they would, would feel the loss of those writers if there were, red, you know, readily made of replacements. So I don't think it's even about, you know, for them, and I, I, you know, I'm not bashing Hollywood because that's what Hollywood is. It's an, it's an entity that makes money. It gives us entertainment and it makes money based off of that entertainment. But in the future? Well, I can tell you something right now. I mean, trying to get an actor to act for, for mm -hmm. next film that we're producing together, be step fan, right? Um... It comes to a point now that, you know, he deserves to get pay. Yeah. And he deserves everything he asked for because he is this person. It's amazing. Right. But then I still need to make this pro project. So how do you do it? You know, everybody <laughs> needs something. Yes. So, you know, you can't sell yourself out. You don't want to sell them out because you know the value of their of their craft. Yes. And I, I got to tell you, OK, I'm going to be I'm going to be honest. I'll be the bad guy. I probably, because I really, really want to make good projects, the idea of having total control over making a character, I'm talking about the nuanced stuff, the, the facial features, expressions, and sometimes you can't convey that when you're trying to give an actor what you're wanting. You know, it doesn't always jump out of your head when you're trying to explain it. But to be able to make that character... That's tempting. I'm not going to say that I would go over. But if I had the opportunity, don't be surprised if I if I well, go over. Dr. Frankenstein, you know, that that's what we were talking about. We were just about. talking about that. You're going to create, you don't know the outcome of that character either. So you're creating something that you're passionate, that you yep. think it's what it should yep. be. But then... You know, what happened to the monster after Frankenstein created him? Uh, the monster was screwed. I mean, it was like, it, it was, the monster was done before the book was done. I mean, it was already a given that it can only end one way, you know, and that's, and that's unfortunate. And, and what if AI, right? Turned around. First turn around and starts doing the character that you were not even expecting and gets out of control. Well, and they, they've had, they've had studies on, because the, the thing was, when does AI actually understand that it's conscious? You know, they, they, there's no real metric for, for measuring when a being becomes conscious. Okay. And if we don't really have an understanding of when something becomes conscious, now we're talking about some real sci-fi sci shit. If, if something becomes conscious before we're aware that it's conscious, what are, what are its observations of us? You're right. You know, let's just take film out of it because AI and film, you know, it can only do so much. But when we have AI running other things, um, whether it's um, customer service, whether it's um, our defense systems. Well, if it's operating off of being aware and it starts adopting ideas of good and evil. You know, i.e. Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> That's really like, wow. Then what? To even think about it right now that we can... We have the capacity. Well, I'll tell you, I saw a long time ago, there's a, um, an anime, because I'm an anime fanatic. Um, 
and it was called Macross. I forgot which one it was. I got all these different iterations of Macross. And there was this computer-generated um, intelligence, this AI-generated in, uh, intelligence called Sharon Apple. And Sharon Apple was this singer um, thing. Well, Sharon Apple ended up becoming more and more alive, and the AI turned on the people. Oh wow! Well. Now this was made. I think I think it might have been either early two thousands or late nineteen nineties, where people were even messing around with that idea. But the end result was it decided that we were the problem. So the creator became the problem, and the logic was, you know, basically to get rid of that which it deemed was a threat. But, you know, if you think about it, everything that we, we have at our disposal is potentially dangerous. Nuclear power is dangerous. You know, you remember the meltdown in Chernobyl? If somebody messes up, doesn't do their job, something happens, then we got a nuclear radioactive cloud. Mm -hmm. um, just about everything that we generate, that we make, that we, that we utilize, it, it, there's a downside to it if it's misused. So I guess our only hope is that it's not misused and that we don't, we know when to say when it's almost like drinking, you know, drinking a beer, how many is too many. And I think we have to, we have to keep control of ourselves before it gets out of hand because ultimately we're still the architects of it. We still are. And we still have to think that there's bigger people than us too, that can just come and take over. Like that's true. This. That's true. You know, and that's where you decide if you want to be quiet about what you know and how much you want to share too. Exactly. And and that's something uh what what the Spider Man says with Great what is it with great power comes great responsibility. Correct. It's like that movie uh, and how like the the man who created the yeah. atomic bomb. You know, even uh Have you seen that yet? I, I, it is beautiful. Yes. I loved it. Okay. I'm a I love cinematography and the way it was shot. The acting was was wonderful. I have yet to see Oppenheimer, and Killian Murphy is my favorite actor. I saw him on um, uh, Peaky Blinders. I mean, I've seen him before that. Mm -hmm. Have you seen Peaky Blinders? No, I haven't. Acting toward a force, a clinic on acting. You need to watch that TV series. Just in passing, you need to watch that. Okay, I will. I will do that. But the, but here it comes. Right, we're talking about AI. And then we're talking about great chemistry between the actors, yeah. right? How would AI come into that chemistry between characters? Like what the, the human actor, like, yeah, they can probably create this AI, but- Can they create chemistry? Yes. So that, that the, the nuanced stuff, the, the, the things that make us human, I'm going to tell you, if they do that, that's, that's scary. If they can imitate those things, which- up until now, have not been because I mean I look at AI art. Some of it's better than art that real pe real life people make, but there's something about it that's still mechanical. With, I agree with you. With the same, you know, Mid Journey, all that, hey, beautiful, excellently rendered. But I know that that that's that's some Mid Journey shit right there. Are we going to be like I know that's some computer generated actor shit right there? <laughs> and, and there's a thing. Uh, what moves us is there chemistry between each other. Yeah. Uh, getting to know each other, feelings or emotions. Yeah. So is AI going to get to that point of other characters that I don't think, I, I think it's going to take some time, but I really still believe in the film noir. I, I'm, yeah. you know, like film noir for me, it's my passion, right? Yeah. When all the technical aspects of digital, digital technology came along, nobody cared about my visual, you know, yeah. like the visuals, that I love the graininess, yeah. the 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 more uh, depth into the lighting, yeah. the more you know shadows and and now when the digital came, it was so perfect. It, it was, was beautiful. It was. Like you can see your pores, you know, people's faces. I'm like, eh. you know, what's weird about digital stuff though. Think about how everybody was afraid of digital stuff. So you had photographers, and then digital cameras came along. And change the game, and, the, and the, the traditional photographers were like, "That's that's not even that takes no talent. That doesn't take this. It's a threat to photography. Period." Well, all it did was change photography, mm -hmm. and the people who were talented, they just remained talented coming into the digital age. Um, there's a photographer here, a friend of mine. I love her to death, 
Ann Sherman is just as great. And I'm going to give a shout out to Ann. I love Ann to death. And she, we're supposed to be shooting here at some time if I would get my act together. Um, but Ann's work was good before digital. Mm -hmm. Ann's work is good after digital. Oh, that's awesome. So it didn't have any effect on her because she was talented. Mm -hmm. um, digital film, all 35 millimeter film is the way to go. You know, blah, 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 blah. And... Um, you and Quentin Tarantino shot Hateful Eight on thirty-five millimeter because he couldn't get what he was wanting out of out of digital. Correct. But now with all these advan advances, digital does everything. Mm -hmm. And all that matters is how talented are you at using this new tool to make all all those different visual effects. If we look at AI in that way, okay, and we use it where necessary, you know, because nowadays with all the AI. Uh, not AI, but let's say computer-generated graphics, it's overkill. I really think it's way overkill sometimes. And people so. are complaining about it. People are, they're complaining. They're like, wait a minute, that doesn't look real. You know, and I, I'm not critiquing it, at least not right now. We'll do that in another episode. Okay. <laughs> but She-Hulk, um, some people love it, some people hate it. Oh, I watched it. You watched it? Yeah. I'm <laughs> I, I I'm in between, you know. I'm a girl. What can I tell you? When you see a woman with power and strength, you can... well, you love it. You love the content of it. Yes. But also with these with these big ass budgets for these shows and these movies, the CG it doesn't look good on certain things. So my thing is this: when it's overkill, you start insulting the public with. We could just put this in here and then overpay for this over here. It, it blows up budgets for no reason. And that's when talent starts to kind of get removed from the equation. Um, writing notwithstanding, because, you know, there can be some clever writing and terrible, you know, effects. If AI is treated the same way as we're starting to treat, you know, CG graphics um, and, and special effects, then I think what's going to happen is people are going to take notice. Mm -hmm. And I think at a certain point, the public may be what is the determining factor in where this technology goes i i really think so and and the whole thing it's it is it is what moves us as 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 a human being yeah. this um we hear we visualize and it's you know everybody has different tastes everybody wants different things out of life yes and that's when it's going to come to to ai what us are looking forward in order to spend time and being entertained that makes us happy. Yeah. yeah. That's how I see it. I think you're right. I think you're right. And this it's an interesting topic, and I want to expound upon it in a, in a future episode. And, um, you know, I want to know what everybody else thinks. You know, I want, to, I want them to, to give their opinion. So I'm telling everybody out there who is listening to Screen Say, to uh, share, like, and subscribe, and uh, let us know what you think. Yes, please. And the other thing was like, it's theater coming back strong now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I want to end it like that too because I'm like, ooh, now you know, theater yeah. has been put in the back, and now it's starting to kind of move move forward. It's the same thing as the uh, the singers, right? Exactly. Digital work and uh, music. Exactly. What happened now? They're going out there and exactly. people are buying their tickets because now. They, they're able to perform more in front of people in order to gain that popularity, exactly. gain that money, and being able to survive. Exactly. Well, I appreciate, and Melissa, we both appreciate um, everybody joining us for Screen Say. Um, it's a new channel, and we're trying to build this, this little channel into something special. So until the next episode, take care, and hope to connect with you soon. Adios. Bye-bye. <laughs>